The Air Force just announced plans to keep the B-52 Stratofortress flying until 2050. That means this bomber, which first took to the skies in 1952, will serve for nearly a century. Picture a military aircraft designed when Harry Truman was president, still dropping precision weapons in an era of hypersonic missiles and stealth technology. It makes absolutely no sense. The Air Force has the B-2 spirit with radar evading stealth. They're building the B-21 Raider with next-generation capabilities. Yet they're spending billions to upgrade a 70-year-old design that enemy radar can spot from hundreds of miles away. Against all logic, the B-52 remains irreplaceable. Welcome to Flight Deck. Today we're exploring why the most advanced Air Force in history refuses to retire an aircraft that's older than most of its pilots' grandparents. The answer reveals engineering principles and strategic realities that challenge everything you think you know about military aviation. To understand why the B-52 defies retirement, we need to examine what this aircraft actually does that nothing else can match. The B-52 carries 70,000 pounds of weapons across 8,800 miles without refueling. That's flying from Missouri to Afghanistan, conducting a bombing mission, and returning home without ever landing. No other bomber combines that payload capacity with that range. The B-2 Spirit carries only 40,000 pounds of weapons. The B-1B Lancer manages 75,000 pounds but has less than half the B-52's range. The new B-21 Raider will be smaller and stealthier, but won't match the B-52's sheer cargo capacity. When the Air Force needs to deliver massive ordnance loads to distant targets, only one aircraft makes economic and operational sense. Think about what this means in practical terms. A single B-52 can carry 20 cruise missiles or 51 precision-guided bombs. To deliver equivalent firepower, you'd need multiple B-2 sorties or a squadron of fighter bombers. Each additional aircraft means more pilots, more maintenance crews, more fuel consumption, and exponentially higher costs. The B-52 solves this problem through simple math, one old airframe doing the work of several modern aircraft, but payload capacity alone doesn't explain why the Air Force plans another 27 years of service. Plenty of aircraft carry heavy loads. The real answer lies in something far more subtle. The B-52's fundamental design created capabilities that modern engineering struggles to replicate. The B-52 was engineered during an era when designers couldn't rely on computers to optimize every component. Instead, they built massive structural margins into the airframe, wings that could handle forces far exceeding normal flight loads, fuselage structures overbuilt by modern standards, landing gear designed for weights the original aircraft never approached. This over-engineering, wasteful by contemporary standards, created something remarkable, an aircraft that could absorb seven decades of modifications without structural limitations. Modern aircraft are optimized to exact specifications. Every component weighs precisely what it needs to and no more. The B-52's excessive structural strength means engineers can bolt on new systems without worrying about exceeding design limits. Consider what's been added since 1952. Modern radar systems, digital flight controls, advanced navigation equipment, electronic warfare suites, new weapons pylons, updated engines, modifications that would overstress a contemporary airframe. The B-52 absorbs these changes because its structure was never optimized to minimum weight. The engineering inefficiency of 1952 became the adaptability advantage of 2025. This reveals a fundamental tension in aircraft design. Modern engineering produces incredibly efficient aircraft optimized for specific missions, but optimization creates rigidity. When requirements change or technology advances, highly optimized designs struggle to adapt. The B-52's wasteful over-engineering provided flexibility that purpose-built modern bombers lack. The economics of bomber operations explain why the Air Force accepts an aircraft that enemy radar can spot from 200 miles away. Stealth bombers cost approximately $130,000 per flight hour. 
The B-52 costs $70,000 per flight hour. For missions where stealth isn't required, and most bombing missions occur in permissive airspace after air defenses are suppressed, the B-52 delivers firepower at half the cost. Military budgets face relentless pressure to accomplish more with fewer resources. The B-52 provides mass firepower delivery at sustainable cost levels. When the Air Force needs to maintain continuous combat operations over months or years, operational economics matter more than cutting-edge technology. A stealth bomber that's too expensive to fly regularly provides less combat power than an old bomber that operates continuously. Think about typical air operations. The opening phase of conflict requires stealth bombers to penetrate sophisticated air defenses and destroy high-value targets. This is where B-2s and B-21s prove irreplaceable. But after air superiority is established, missions shift to supporting ground forces, destroying enemy logistics, and maintaining persistent strike capability. These missions don't require stealth. They require sustained payload delivery at affordable cost. The B-52 excels at this unglamorous but essential work. Flying above contested airspace, launching cruise missiles or precision bombs at targets identified by intelligence networks. 20 aircraft conducting continuous operations, maintaining pressure on enemy forces, destroying supply lines and command posts. This isn't glamorous like penetration strikes, but it's how air power actually wins wars. The maintenance realities of aging aircraft seem like they should drive retirement decisions. Surely a 70-year-old bomber requires constant repairs and aging component replacement. But the B-52's maintenance story defies expectations because of decisions made decades ago about manufacturing and spare parts. The Air Force built 744 B-52s between 1952 and 1962. Only 76 remain in service. That means 668 aircraft were retired and stored or scrapped over the decades. Those retired airframes provided an enormous spare parts inventory that kept remaining aircraft flying. When a component fails, maintenance crews can often source replacement parts from storage or retired aircraft rather than manufacturing new components. Modern aircraft don't have this advantage. Production runs are smaller, and accounting practices require disposing of excess inventory rather than storing it for future use. When a B-2 component fails, replacement parts must be manufactured to precise specifications at enormous cost. The B-52's legacy manufacturing approach created a parts ecosystem that reduces maintenance expenses. Additionally, the B-52's mechanical systems are simpler than modern aircraft. Hydraulic controls instead of fly-by-wire. Analog backup systems alongside digital primary controls. This redundancy and mechanical simplicity means maintenance crews can repair systems that would require complete replacement in contemporary aircraft. The engineering philosophy of the 1950s, mechanical reliability over electronic optimization, produces maintenance advantages in 2025. But the Air Force isn't simply maintaining 1950s technology, they're systematically upgrading every B-52 system while retaining the basic airframe that provides structural adaptability. The current upgrade program reveals how the Air Force plans to operate B-52s for another quarter century. Every aircraft is receiving new Rolls-Royce F-130 engines that improve fuel efficiency by 30% and increase range significantly. The radar systems are being completely replaced with modern active electronically scanned arrays that provide targeting capability matching current fighters. Communication systems are being upgraded to Link 16 data link connectivity that integrates B-52s into networked warfare environments. Weapons integration work allows launching the latest cruise missiles and precision-guided munitions. The cockpit displays are being replaced with modern glass panels showing tactical information in real time. Even the defensive systems are being updated with modern electronic warfare suites. Think about what this means from an engineering perspective. The Air Force is essentially building a 2025 bomber inside a 1952 airframe. 
The engines, avionics, weapon systems, communications, everything except the basic structure is being replaced with contemporary technology. This transformation costs billions but remains far cheaper than designing and manufacturing new bombers from scratch. The structural adaptability that seemed like over-engineering in 1952 now enables this modernization. The wings can handle new engines without reinforcement. The fuselage can accommodate modern electronics without structural modification. The weapons bays accept new munitions without extensive redesign. The B-52's excessive structural margins provide the foundation for technological transformation that converts a Cold War relic into a 21st century weapons platform. This approach reveals sophisticated thinking about defense acquisition. Rather than pursuing optimal solutions for current requirements, the Air Force is maximizing return on historical investments while preserving funds for truly revolutionary capabilities like the B-21 Raider. The strategic implications of B-52 longevity extend beyond simple cost savings. The aircraft provides what military planners call capacity, the ability to conduct many operations simultaneously across vast distances. Stealth bombers provide capability, the ability to accomplish specific high-value missions that conventional aircraft cannot. Both capacity and capability matter, but they serve different strategic purposes. Imagine a conflict requiring sustained air operations across multiple theaters. The Air Force needs bombers over the Pacific supporting maritime operations, bombers over Europe deterring aggression, and bombers in the Middle East conducting counter-terrorism strikes simultaneously. Stealth bombers number fewer than 50 total. You simply cannot maintain global presence with such limited numbers regardless of individual capability. The B-52 fleet provides this capacity. With 76 aircraft available, the Air Force can maintain continuous operations in multiple regions while keeping sufficient numbers in reserve for contingencies. This strategic presence shapes adversary decision-making enemy planners must account for American bomber capabilities even in regions where stealth aircraft aren't currently deployed. This reveals a fundamental principle of military power. Presence matters as much as capability. The most advanced weapon system provides no deterrent value if it's on the other side of the world when crisis erupts. The B-52's range and numbers create global presence that shapes the strategic environment continuously rather than episodically. Additionally, the psychological impact of B-52 operations shouldn't be underestimated. These aircraft have conducted bombing missions in every major American conflict since Vietnam. Enemy forces know what B-52 strikes mean. Sustained punishment from aircraft flying beyond the reach of air defenses. That reputation carries weight that newer systems must still establish through combat operations. Looking toward 2050 when current plans envision final B-52 retirement, the strategic landscape will have transformed in ways we can barely predict. Hypersonic missiles might render traditional bombers obsolete. Autonomous systems could replace crewed aircraft entirely. Space-based weapons might provide strike capabilities that make atmospheric bombers unnecessary. Yet the B-52 will likely adapt to these changes just as it adapted to precision weapons, stealth technology, and network-centric warfare. The structural margins that enabled past upgrades will accommodate future modifications we haven't yet imagined. Perhaps B-52s will become launch platforms for hypersonic weapons or control nodes for autonomous combat systems. The basic airframe provides flexibility for missions that don't exist yet. This adaptability represents the aircraft's ultimate value. In rapidly changing technological and strategic environments, flexibility often proves more valuable than optimization. The B-52 isn't the best bomber for any specific mission, but it's good enough for most missions while remaining adaptable to unforeseen requirements. That combination of adequate performance and unlimited flexibility creates enduring value that purpose-built systems cannot match. The Air Force's commitment to B-52 operations through 2050 reflects sophisticated understanding of these principles. 
Rather than pursuing optimal solutions that quickly become obsolete, they're maximizing return on proven platforms while investing in revolutionary capabilities like the B-21 that will define future air warfare. So why does the Air Force keep flying the B-52 against all logic? Because the logic of military operations favors proven capacity over theoretical capability. Because structural overengineering from 1952 provides adaptability that modern optimization cannot match. Because operational economics require affordable platforms for unglamorous but essential missions. Because strategic presence requires numbers that expensive bombers cannot provide. The B-52 Stratofortress succeeds by violating every principle of modern aircraft design. It's overbuilt, under-optimized, and technologically obsolete. Yet it delivers combat power more effectively than any aircraft designed to replace it. This paradox reveals truths about engineering, strategy, and military acquisition that challenge contemporary thinking. What surprised you most about why the B-52 remains irreplaceable? the structural adaptability, the operational economics, or the strategic capacity it provides? Let me know in the comments. If you want more deep dives into military aviation engineering and strategy, subscribe to Flight Deck. Until next time, remember that sometimes the best solution isn't the most advanced technology, it's the platform that keeps working when everything else proves too expensive too specialized, or too limited to meet real operational demands.